at the main entrance too. It's extremely main, ironic. On the, all four corners of the of the intersection. Well, the news is going on right under their nose. Right yeah. in front of them. Right in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. right when the convention was shutting down, so the people were dribbling out of the convention center, getting in the cabs right next to these people protesting this this uh, injustice being done to them through the cab companies. And, you know, I, 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 looking back, I wish we got more B-roll of those people leaving because they, they're just hollow. Those you guys call this. You want to uh, intro the piece or just go in straight into it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, you know, this uh, this piece that we put together uh, was quickly put together, and we really enjoyed putting it together. But it's a message about the uh, media that we're going to present more. We're going to go more in depth than in the future uh, and really expose. But it's uh, these are the fundamentals of the problem here, basically, in this package. All right, let's take a look at that. John Bound for the FOO's Nightly News. Behind me is the Las Vegas Convention Center, where a five-headed hydra has rested itself for the remainder of the week. Now, there are a lot of good people in there with a lot of great ideas and a lot of great technology, but they have no idea that they serve a dark lord, a cartel known as the five controlling corporations of the media. They include Time Warner. They include Viacom. Disney, Bertelsmann, and News Corp. In 1983, there were 50. Today, there are five. Was anyone watching this report alive in 1983? Does the current state of media seem vastly different to you? We once had competition. We had regionalism. We had success based on talent, writing, and public outcry. As a corporatocracy gained ground, it required its singular voice to be heard. But in order to shove their elitist plastic propaganda in our faces, things had to change for the average American. And while we slept, it did. In the mid-1980s, the National Association of Broadcasters launched a campaign to repeal the Fairness Doctrine. The Fairness Doctrine required the holders of broadcast licenses to both present controversial issues of public importance and to do so in a manner that was, in the Commission's view, honest, equitable, and balanced. With the NAB's insistence, the FCC decided to eliminate the doctrine in 1987. Civic discussions among the people of a free and democratic society fizzled out and died. Anybody want to talk about alternative media? Alternative media! Anybody? Or are you all slaves to five corporations? I would assume that in an alternative media is trying to get the truth versus, you know, what the big companies are doing. Um, I, I believe that's probably, you know, the biggest thing about it is, you know, the other side of the story um, or the truth or whatever. Because um, all the time, they'll just cut it out. Like, you're going to do a video, you're going to cut certain things out, whatever. Um, but they do it on a scale, you know, the big companies. Um, where they can actually manipulate it. Then Clinton ushered in a complete monopoly by signing the Telecommunications Act of 1996. The act basically allowed the regulated ownership of regional media to be bought up by the massive clear channel and cumulus radio chains, playing automated music from the early 90s and earlier, while future musicians literally must sell their souls to their Illuminati masters to achieve success. As we left the NAB conference, we ran into the ironic event of a taxi protest. We are forced to work 72 hours every week. It's like we make, we don't make a living wage. We are, uh, we make under a minimum wage and it's unfair. The media is boycotting us. We have been on strike for five weeks. Very little media coverage. And the reason why is because these two companies gave half a million dollar contributions to Governor Sandoval. Local News, I tried to call them and they told me they're too busy trying to find a uh, weather channel. Yesterday was a bit of cloudy and rainy. The success of alternative media dwarfs the numbers of MSNBC and it is rising. Will the alternative media be heralded as a renaissance of sorts? Or will it be swallowed up by the beast and the machine, the five-headed hydra? of the media cartel. John Bound, InfoWorld Nightly News. Wow, that was interesting. But tell me a little bit about that 
Well, the, you know, that, that protest, uh, we, we spoke with a guy afterwards, and, you know, we were noticing that there was a, just one ethnicity there. And, uh, and a guy approached us who was with the protest, and he said, the big fan of the Joe, Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knew who I was, and I'm never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. Uh, it's growing. Uh, so he comes and tells us that they're mainly Ethiopian and that they thought the Ethiopians would be, you know, uh, very docile and submissive. Compliant, yeah. Yeah, but they, here they were for, for five weeks protesting against, you know, 72 hour work weeks. Uh, no bathroom breaks, and what they were saying was below minimum wage. And uh, he also made the point that the Asian community was still driving the cabs. They, they, you know, they, they weren't compliant. They were, they were, they were, I'm sorry, they were compliant. Culturally, they were, they were immigrants, but they were used to that, that kind of treatment, that right. sweatshop kind of workmanship. Right. Right. Shove them in, get them to work. Chain their kids up to the pole, I guess, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've been under the heel of that uh, period for so long. That's one of the reasons why the globalists picked China to move all of our industry to, because they knew they could exploit them like that. And they, they would put up with it so much. But the Ethiopians were having a hard time with it. Yeah. yeah. They, were, they weren't putting it out for this. No. Yeah, so they, yeah. they wouldn't put up with the S word. <laughs> they they were going to put up with that. So good for them. Yeah. <laughs> they took to the streets and they were telling people as loud as they could. Exactly. Was going. There was nobody covering this. But there was nobody there to listen. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. One one of the guys in that piece, uh, he, he says, yeah, I called the local news and uh, they had they had to cover the weather. They told them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's just it. You know, most of the news channels, local news channels, they're going to be covering the packages that are delivered to them. Right. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the stuff that comes out from the corporate news media. Yeah, what go. happens? Like John and I both have news. Yeah, that makes that is one of the most news there was segments devoted to the feed. You would spend, you know, at uh, a certain time during the day, you would get a feed from the network, and they say, "Here's the packages that you're going to run," and they send them to everybody, all of the affiliates on on the tape. They would, you put in your tape, you catch the feed as it comes out, and you've got two to three segments of your news product ready to go, already made. No local opinion. You know, that, that, I mean, if we had an opinion on, say, uh, Second Amendment here in Austin, uh, it, it wouldn't be rep it's, it won't be represented anymore on the local. It's a very effective control strategy. You just have to think about it. It's not just what they tell people, but when you have the same stories being covered everywhere from the same perspective, the same angle, telling you the same thing, thing about it, milk those stories. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It makes you think. Is there, is there everybody everybody hears that in a cycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. telling me from everybody. Yeah. You guys. You must be conspiracy theorists. Right, right. right. Because you're actually going out and covering the raw material, right? You're actually doing the reporting. When it's 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 something that's completely different than you're hearing anywhere else. You know, it's just like doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but it's the voice of the people that's being subverted through this this practice of the news product. There's a um, a message that needs to be put out, and it's not what the people are talking about. It's what what uh, you know the corporate agenda that need to get pushed out. How do how do you uh, grow your, your uh, market base, you know, you have to uh, convince them of certain lefts, rights, right or wrongs, and the way to do that is to feed them the right stories to drive them in that direction. It reminds me of what people talk about with uh, movies, theatrical movies, how truth is stranger than fiction. You know, you go out and you take a true story. If you're really close and accurate, it's much more interesting than some kind of a fictional narrative that's cooked up out of Hollywood. You know, and if you go out and you cover what's really happening in the world, and you do it honestly, and you do it from the perspective of what people want to know about, it's a lot more interesting than this dumbed down, homogenized narrative that comes from the corporate newsrooms and then filters down through the hierarchy to the local news stations. Well, it's a lot more exciting to live your life as somebody with your, your own mind, your own uh, free will and creativity than to be some kind of sheep that uh, will just take anything and think that safety in numbers is what's going to make your life meaningful when, in fact, uh, you're going to be dead real soon. We all are. And uh, did you live your life to the fullest with creativity, with what you believed in, to be true to yourself, or did you just give in? what they wanted you to be. Well, I, I think content is going to win out. 
you know, I mean, Alex's his show, his, his whole, you know, the radio show, the news, everything, it's sticky content. If you get somebody there, they see it, they see something that's different, they investigate it, they find out, yeah, there's actually links that show the purchases of the 1.6 billion bullets that actually link to it. We actually footnote our stuff because it's so hard for people to believe the truth after they've been fed this dumbed down, homogenized stuff. We have to footnote it, so we, we do. That's funny. There was, a, there was a guy we met in Vegas uh, after the, the night was over. You know, we, we saddled up to the bar, had a couple of drinks, and met some people. And one guy knew about InfoWars, but all he knew about was the cover story from, from other sources. So he and I were engaging in some conversations about what our message was. And uh, he, well, he was surprised. He said, uh, you know, I, I had no idea that anybody from InfoWars would, would sound like this, or, or, you know, the stories were backed up with actual documents. <laughs> I said, it was a little strong. <laughs> yeah, he's been told oh. by, by outside sources, oh, don't listen to that. It's conspiracy theory crap. Mm-hmm. And I would tell him, like, yeah, there's actual documents. There's purchase orders for the bullets mm-hmm. from the, uh, on the government's own website. Mm-hmm. All of our stuff is backed up factually, and we're, we're saying things that, well, we wouldn't be here. Or we would be, you know, we'd be the national quarrel. We'd be getting sued by, you know, Carol Burnett or whatever. Right? Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys. That was really interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very important. We're trying to stay at top of our game to try to, like I said, have multiple studios so we can do more reports and uh, do a better professional job of it. And uh, it's real important work out there. And, and it's uh, great that you guys cover the story that other people won't cover. Uh, that's, a, that's an important thing. Well, you know, it's very important to not have just a homogenized fictional narrative in many cases, but to get a different perspective on the news. And we do our best to try to give you the news as accurately as possible and try to cover the things that we think you're interested in, things that are going to affect your freedom, your prosperity, your health. And so if you are watching this on YouTube, help us with a subscription to Prison Planet TV. You can buy one of these and you can uh, pass it out to 10 different people who can be watching this at the same time. The other thing that we do is we put out a magazine each month, and that's a great way to reach people as well. One of the things about print magazines, you know, they're dying left and right, but we think it's because of content. And I think we've got some really compelling content in the InfoWars magazine that comes out each month. You can also pick up that in various quantities. You can become a micro distributor. So uh, go to InfoWars.com and support us. We depend on your contribution and on your purchases to fund our operations. That's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.